Well, we've repeatedly sounded the alarm about Google and the multifaceted threat, the imminent threat it poses to this country and our democracy. Tonight, as part of our ongoing investigation, we want to bring you this. Google recently announced it will not compete for a $10 billion Pentagon project because that project would conflict with what the company calls its, quote, corporate values. And yet even as it abandons the U.S. military in a country that made it possible, Google is continuing to expand its work in and on behalf of the fascist government of China. Apparently that does not violate their corporate values to do things like working on a censored search engine that China's authoritarian regime can use to monitor and suppress the dissent from its own population. It also doesn't violate their corporate values to expand artificial intelligence research in China, even though the Chinese military is working hard to overtake the United States in artificial intelligence. But there is more. Google hoards more data than any other company in the history of the world and cannot be relied on to keep that data secure, your data. It recently emerged that Google discovered a security hole in its Google Plus platform months ago, but did not bother to inform users about it. And then there is the overriding matter of censorship, political censorship. In an 85-page internal memo obtained by this show, Google executives discussed embracing what they called a, quote, European tradition of policing and censoring online speech for the sake of increasing revenues and furthering global expansion. Of course, when Google decides to censor views that it doesn't like, it will empower people like Google design leader Dave Hogue. After Brett Kavanaugh was confirmed to the Supreme Court, Hogue tweeted this, quote, You are finished, GOP. You polished the final nail for your own coffins. F you all to hell. Well, Google gave a typically disingenuous statement to this show, saying that everyone ought to calm down and ignore the evidence that they're looking at. Quote, Google is committed to free expression. Supporting the free flow of ideas is core to our mission. Where we have developed our own content policies, we enforce them in a politically neutral way. Giving preference to content of one particular ideology over another would fundamentally conflict with our goal of providing services that work for everyone. Not one of those words is true. And we prove that consistently. Harmony Dillon is an attorney. She represents James Damore in his lawsuit against Google, which fired him for expressing his opinions. And she joins us tonight. Harmony, thank you uh, for coming on. Are you, well, tell me what, what your reaction is, knowing all that you do about how Google operates. When you hear a statement like that, self-righteously lecturing the rest of us about freedom of expression and openness. Well, I'm glad that the public's attention is now being drawn to what James Damore and several other of my clients have known for some time, which is that Google talks out of both sides of its mouth. Internally, it absolutely crushes and punishes uh, conservatives and punishes dissent and also skews its search engine results and its products against conservatives. But then publicly, it tells lawmakers, it tells the public, it tells regulators, it tells the courts that it's not doing any of those things. And now with that document you talked about, it's been caught red-handed saying internally, yeah, of course we censor and it's good censorship. And of course, um, you know, it's beneficial socially to do that for ourselves as a business and for society at whole. So it, they're going to need to now be held accountable and reconcile these irreconcilable positions that they have. So uh, correct me if I'm wrong, you're the attorney here, but doesn't Google have some kind of exemption granted by Congress under the Decency Act where it pledges to not act as a news organization, not edit content, but be a pipeline through which information flows. They're clearly violating that agreement and yet Congress is doing nothing about it because why? Yeah, bingo, um, Tucker, under Communications Decency Act Section 230, all of these big social media companies, Twitter, Facebook, Google, and others, have immunity. So Fox News, for example, can't label me or somebody else dangerous and then sideline right. us and censor us. That would be defamatory. But Google, Twitter, Facebook, and others can, and they do every day. And so now they're acknowledging it privately. They're not acknowledging it publicly. But Google and these other companies, they spread large buckets of cash around uh, Capitol Hill. It's effective, and everybody looks the other way. It's protection money. But, but, sense, but, but, but really I mean, it, it, they're lying, looking but at it. I don't understand. I mean, it's really simple. They have this exemption. We don't have it. News organizations don't have it. They have it. And they're right. lying. And no one in Congress does anything. Why is that not infuriating? 
It's outrageous, and we need to hold them accountable. And this is on both sides of the aisle. I mean, this problem could be a bilateral problem. The issue is that, uh, you know, they're relying on an outmoded concept that at the nascent uh, early stages of right. the Internet that this protection was needed. That's that's long gone. These people exactly. don't need protection. Then to the, the public needs protection from them. Even and so, put. you know, the tables are okay. turned. That's one thing that they're very concerned about losing that. The well, other is, of they, course, antitrust uh, regulation. Well, and we're on both of those. I know you are, too. Harmeet, we will see you again. Yeah. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you.